So recently, the Raspberry Pi 4 dropped out of the blue. Now, I realize I am a little late to the party at this point, so rather than just making a video listing all the specs and marveling at how impressive they are, I wanted to take a look at whether this Pi is necessary, whether it's overhyped. Sure, the specs are nice, but is this the hero we need or just the one we think we want? I've watched a number of videos in the past few days of people criticizing the new Raspberry Pi 4, so I thought it would be a whole lot more interesting to put on my cynical hat rather than just hop on the new Pi call bandwagon. Maltronics.com is where you can find the latest of hacker hardware, from Wi-Fi deauthors to Malduino keystroke injectors, Wi-Fi keyloggers, and USB protectors. It is run by myself, so do give it two minutes of your time. You're guaranteed to like our tech. Maltronics.com. Link is in the description. People have been talking about the Raspberry Pi as a desktop replacement for years now. This article from 2013 pitted an original Pi against a couple of alternatives to see if any could really replace a desktop PC. The conclusion was a, was a resounding no, but it's been seven long years since the original Pi. Now with eight times the RAM, a CPU with an upgraded architecture, real gigabit ethernet, and now dual 4K outputs. Oh, and it's still about the size of a credit card. I think we better take a second look at whether a Pi could really fill your day-to-day -day computing needs. The Raspberry Pi Foundation seems to think so, so much so that they now have an official Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit on offer for a mere £115. But anyhow, I'm not balling, so I had to go and buy my cables elsewhere. The Pi 4 comes in three versions, one, two, and four gigabyte RAM options. For now, I only have the two gig, still waiting my four gig to arrive, goddammit. Interestingly, the support manual that comes with the Pi alludes to an 8GB Raspberry Pi in the works, which surprised me. Unfortunately, however, this was a typo. <laughs> we probably won't see an 8GB version anytime soon. When it comes to boot media, while the microSD transfer speeds have been doubled in this version of the Pi, you're still getting only 40 megabytes per second, which for a desktop PC is about half the speed of a regular SATA connected hard drive, which isn't too impressive. Some kind of eMMC option would be welcome in the future, because let's be honest, microSD cards just weren't reliably designed for so many random writes. Though in fairness, they are good enough for most projects, just not something I'd put my faith in for a desktop replacement. Though on the bright side, booting via a USB 3 connected drive is coming, just not for a few more months. You'll notice this new Pi has two micro HDMI ports, which means yet more cables to buy. But let's be real, space on this guy is at a premium. You just couldn't physically fit two full-size HDMI connectors without stacking them or something. These ports can each drive a full 4K monitor, which is actually kind of confusing. Is this something creators are actually going to take advantage of? I, I doubt it. Most of my Pi projects have run headless, and I can't think of any occasion for hobbyist projects where two monitors would be a requirement or even mildly useful. Did anyone really ask for this? Which makes me think that they added this for industry customers, for companies that might want to drive advertising displays with a Pi or use them to power computers in call centers, for example. Not the original intention of the Raspberry Pi project, but I suppose we have to keep in mind, I imagine industry customers are really helping to bankroll the Raspberry Pi Foundation. I've only got a two gig version right now as the four gig is out of stock, so I am holding back on doing any real testing as I'm waiting for my four gig to arrive. For business customers, this new Pi is going to be real useful. Being able to power a call center with these things or a bunch of checkout kiosks is now a real option. You have a modular solution with the processing power you need at an affordable price, and it's pretty easy to develop for the Pi. Though let's put business customers to one side and look at the claim that this new Pi is now a desktop replacement. Well, people who may benefit from a low-cost computer would also become infuriated with it. Hobbyists and tinkerers, sure, they're gonna buy a Pi, but for project work, not as a PC. When computers are your main hobby, you can afford to spend a couple hundred on something with a bit more power as a main computer. For education, Pis are great to learn programming and electronics, but again, no school is gonna use these as a desktop replacement when the infrastructure is pretty much universally built on Windows. I suppose I, I could convince my nan to get one of these. It's in the range of an impulse buy and it'll easily do everything she needs. But I'd have to do so much setting up, installing add-ons just to get things working because as I learned in Andreas Spice? Spice? Spice's video? I don't know. 4K playback, for example, just isn't properly supported yet. 
I'd rather get her a cheapo Windows PC that any mildly tech literate person can use and troubleshoot when I'm not around. I just can't help feeling like the Raspberry Pi's business applications have been put ahead of the maker community in this version. If you want to read more on this topic, I'll link a few videos below that really got my noggin joggin when it comes to the uses of the Pi 4. Though, let's take our cynical hats off for a second. I do genuinely look forward to putting the new Pi 4 through its paces. It's now using a 28 nanometer architecture instead of 40. Not only is there more RAM, but it's a lot faster too. This is one of the more major Pi upgrades we've seen in a while, and on the whole, I'm struggling to feel let down by a Pi three times faster than the previous version when the base model's price just hasn't changed. Though my favorite Pi is still the Pi Zero W for its affordability and low power consumption, and I, I doubt I'll be changing my mind anytime soon. This video is sponsored by Ridge. Like me, you probably carry around something like this, a bog standard wallet. They haven't changed much in years. You carry around cards you don't need, receipts from months ago, worthless hotel keycards, and more. Why? Well, because that's just the way things are. Well, it's time for the Wallet 2.0. The streamlined Ridge Wallet helps you carry around only the cards and cash you need. Just stick your essential cards in between the aluminium plates, cash and everything else goes in the money clip in the back. It's super sturdy, nothing is falling out of this. With a lifetime warranty, 30,000 five-star reviews and free returns, there really is no excuse to miss out on this essential bit of kit I've been using daily since I received it. They've also sent me one of their commuter backpacks. It's no fashion statement, though it's the hardiest utilitarian backpack I have, complete with space for a 15-inch laptop, RFID safe pocket, and charging port. Plus, side pockets for my water and coffee? Madness! I can't remember the last time I left the house without these two. Check them out in the description. They're offering 10% off with code SATONIC. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked this video, make sure to tickle that notification bell. And if you're not subscribed, it's probably time to change that. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.